Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The part of God's Word we'll consider together this morning is taken from the first book of Samuel, 20th chapter, beginning with verse 12. Then Jonathan said to David, By the Lord, the God of Israel, I will surely sound out my father by this time the day after tomorrow. If he is favorably disposed toward you, will I not send word and let you know? But if my father is inclined to harm you, may the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if I do not let you know, send you away safely. May the Lord be with you as he has been with my father. But show me unfailing kindness like that of the Lord as long as I live, so that I may not be killed. And do not ever cut off your kindness from my family, not even when the Lord has cut off every one of David's enemies from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, May the Lord call David's enemies to account. And Jonathan had David reaffirm his oath out of love for him, because he loved him as he loved himself. This is God. Dear Christian friends, we all have either had them or we have met them. Friends who will be with you as long as you tell them everything they want to hear. Friends who will love you as long as you listen to them. Friends who believe that you are there to submit to their will and to serve you. When we consider the kind of love that God describes in all three of our lessons today, we see that the love that God gives is not like that. The love that God gives is not self-centered. It is Christ-centered. The friendships that God establishes are based on mutual submission to God, not to me. And so we see in the friendship between David and Jonathan how it plays out what we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, that love always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, and it always perseveres. And you'll notice that as we go through this, every single time that Jonathan talks to his friend David, he refers to the name of the Lord. He doesn't refer to God Almighty, the judge of the earth, who will then who will, who will punish you if you cross him. But he refers to the Lord, the Savior, who loves us so much that he came to be our Messiah our Redeemer, our Rescuer, who loved us more than life itself. Because for Christians, that's where love comes from. In verse 12, Jonathan says to David, by the Lord, the God of Israel, I will surely sound out my father by this time the day after tomorrow. Now David had told his friend Jonathan, your father, the king, King Saul, is trying to kill me, and I don't know why. And Jonathan, being a good son, didn't want to believe that of his father. The picture here, of course, is of Saul, King Saul, Jonathan's father, trying to pin David to the wall with a spear. This was a very vivid memory for David, because he barely escaped with his life. Jonathan didn't know that. David did. So, Jonathan wanted to protect his friend. And he wanted to find out, if my father is a danger to you, I'll find out for you. I will not insist that I'm right. I will not insist that because it's my father, it couldn't possibly be that he's a sinner. But I'll find out, and I will protect him. And you'll notice that he said, by the Lord, the God of Israel, that's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because God has brought us together. And I want God's will to be done in both of our lives. 
So by the Lord, the God of Israel, I will surely sound out my father by this time of day after tomorrow. And if he's favorably disposed to you, if it is safe, will I not send a word to you and let you know? So you can know, you can come back, and we can pursue our friendship, and we can rejoice together in the protection of the Lord of God. But, if my father is inclined to harm you, may the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if I do not let you know and send you away safely. May the Lord be with you as he has been with my father. Love always trusts. Jonathan is asking his friend to trust him. That if I find out that my father is, intends to harm you, trust me. I will let you know and I will sacrifice our time together. And I will send you away so that you can be saved. Christian friendship seeks the good of others more than it seeks the good of ourselves. Christian friendship seeks the will of God, even if it means that we have to be separate, even if it means that we will lose something for a while. Because Christian love is not selfish. Christian love is faithful. And so Christian love trusts. David would trust his friend. And unfortunately, he would find out that King Saul was trying to kill him. And David would then come back and send David away to safety when he found out that his father really did intend to harm him. And even though it broke his heart, because he loved his friend more than he loved himself, he would make that sacrifice. And I think the interesting thing about human nature is that when we talk about sacrifice in friendship, our sinful nature kicks in. And maybe it already has for you this morning, but your sinful nature kicks in and says, yes, Christian love should sacrifice. And I will find out who my friends are by the ones who will sacrifice for me. You see the temptation in there? God did not define Christian love as finding people who will sacrifice for you. God defined Christian love as finding people for whom you will sacrifice. But our sinful nature likes to twist that and say that I will know who my friends are by those who will give me stuff, those who will back down before me, those who will do the things I tell them to do, those who will listen to me. But in fact, God defines love by the people for whom we will sacrifice. To whom do we listen? So when we show divine love, we show humility and the willingness to listen and to sacrifice without expecting anything in return. You consider the love that Jesus Christ showed for us. Remember he said to his disciples, love each other the way that I have loved you? The new command was not love each other. He always did say, love your neighbor as yourself. But now he said it's going to be better. The standard is higher. No longer is it sufficient to love your neighbor as yourself. Now you love each other the way I love you. The way I sacrifice. When I gave for you. And love always hopes. Show me unfailing kindness like that of the Lord as long as I live, that I may not be killed. Jonathan's hope, even though he knew that God had chosen his friend to be king in his place, Jonathan was Saul's eldest son and therefore would have been the next king, except that God rejected the house of Saul and chose David. And Jonathan recognized that in the Lord's will, he would be subservient. But he said, show me unfailing kindness that, like that of the Lord as long as I live, so that I may not be killed. Because his house would be a rival house to the house of David. And the house of Saul 
would, there would always be members of it who would say, we should have the kingship. And therefore, we should gather as many as we, many as we can to take the kingship back. And so Jonathan is asking David to trust his relative. And he is hoping that David will love him enough not to cut off his family. Not even when the Lord has cut off every one of David's enemies from the face of the earth. And he places himself and his friend David in God's hand. And so he says, so Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, May the Lord call all David's enemies to the count. Because love persists. But because he's placed David into God's hands, because we've placed our friends in God's hands, we want them to be blessed by him. We want their life to be one that will honor and glorify God. And for the most part, David's what? Wasn't he? He was Israel's singer of songs. He was a friend of God. He was faithful in all God's house. He wasn't perfect. We know that. There are sins of his that are displayed for all the world to see. But he lived by his faith. And he kept his promise. His love persevered, even though Jonathan would die in battle before David ascended the throne. David went out of his way to show kindness to his family. Because Jonathan had a son, his name was Mephibosheth. And he was crippled with both feet. And David sought him out and brought him into his house and treated him, treated him as family. Love always perseveres. So they made, he made a covenant with the house of David, saying, May the Lord call David's enemies to account. And Jonathan let David reaffirm his oath out of love for him. Because he loved him as he loved himself. This is the kind of friendship that God gives. Best of friends, looking to serve each other. Not looking for how my friend can serve me, but how I can be Christ-like in his life. We know what it's like to have a friend who thinks it's all about him, who thinks he's always right, who thinks his way is always best, who thinks if we just listened long enough, we would come to his point of view. And it is our prayer that that friend is not us. But that we, out of faith and love and service to the Lord our God, would seek to love our friends the way Jesus loved us. That we would find ways to sacrifice for them. Find ways to make their lives better, more productive, more glorifying to the Lord their God. That's rare. Because we cannot generate that kind of love on our own. That kind of love is a gift from God. That kind of love comes only because Jesus sacrificed Himself, washed us clean, and made us new in Him. Amen. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And now let us confess that faith that we share in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty.